On the workbench is a Zenith radio from the late 1930s. It's a model 860 along with the matching speaker. Today we're going to explore the safety aspects of this speaker wire. We will look at the schematic and then we'll look at the bottom of the radio just to see if it's been modified. This may seem like an odd place to talk about safety. I mean, after all, it's just a speaker. However, as we'll show in a moment, these are actually the highest voltage wires in the entire set, and they're simply brought out, all four of them, to the speaker. As a quick orientation, this is the mains transformer. It's responsible for dropping the line voltage down to about 6 volts to run the filaments for the tubes. It's also responsible for sending high voltage to this tube here, a Type 80 rectifier, which then, along with the filter caps, converts the AC into DC for the receiver. Finally, this is the power output tube. It's a Type 42, and that, in conjunction with the rectifier and the speaker, are where we're going next on the schematic. This is the power supply for that Zenith Model 860 radio. Here's the mains transformer, 6.3 volt winding for the filaments. I believe it's 5 volts for the Type 80 rectifier. This is the center tap high voltage section with two diodes here. That would make this the high voltage. There's an inductor, or at the time they'd call it a choke. Then there is another filter capacitor. You may recognize that as a Pi filter. If we look very, very closely though, we'll see that it's labeled speaker field. For the time, this was a cost optimization. Instead of having a permanent magnet in the speaker, they would take all of the current for the radio and run it through that field coil, which took the place of a more expensive permanent magnet. As far as electrical safety is concerned, we note that this coil is mounted on the speaker and there are two wires leading to it. Therefore, the high voltage, which is coming right off this Type 80 rectifier with these filter capacitors, is in those speaker wires. Moving up, we see the output section of this receiver. Here's that Type 42 tube I pulled out. And this is the output transformer, which is mounted on the speaker. So once again, we have wires leading to the speaker. That's two wires for the field coil and two wires for the output transformer. Here's that output transformer mounted on the speaker, and here are the four wires. Two for the field coil, and two for the transformer. While we're here, let's take this plate off so we can see those wire connections. If we trace it, we'll find that two go to the field coil, and two will go down to the transformer itself. Here's a look underneath the radio. We can see that it has been modified. There's a capacitor that should be installed here that's missing. It looks like it's been replaced with these older electrolytics. We can see they're just kind of tacked into place. And you can see that they're not really mechanically held in by anything. There's a broken wire here. And I don't know if you can make it out, but there's a solder job there that's not particularly attractive. And then this here is just kind of exposed. It's interesting that these older capacitors are still here. These are the paper capacitors that are covered in wax. It's been my experience that they typically go bad. For those of you who are wondering, yes, this is a Zenith radio. And yes, it does have the infamous Zenith resistor, which in this case is broken. We can see that this terminal lug here has been desoldered and this wire wound resistor has been tacked into its place. In closing, beware the speaker wire because these four wires contain the high voltage for the entire set.